Let's take a look at whether BRF3, this bromine trifluoride, is polar or nonpolar. So we start out with a valid Lewis structure. If you need help drawing this Lewis structure here, there's a link in the description how to do that. So let's take a look at the difference in electronegativity between bromine and fluorine. So here's bromine and here's fluorine. The difference is about 1. When we have a difference between 2 and 0.5, right around there, we're going to have a polar covalent bond. So the bond between the bromine and the fluorine atoms, each one of those bonds is a polar bond. But we need to look at the molecular geometry to really understand if we have a polar molecule. Let's do that. So this would be our central bromine atom. Remember, we have three fluorine atoms bonded to it. And they would all spread out. And right now, this compound here, even though the fluorines and the bromines, those bonds, would be polar, they're all in opposite directions. This is a symmetrical molecule. So this would be nonpolar. But we've got to remember those two lone pairs. So when we add one lone pair, they occupy space, just like these fluorine atoms, pushes everything down. We have one more lone pair. We drop that in. And we can see that now we end up with this molecular geometry right here. This is called a T-shaped molecular geometry. So we no longer have a symmetrical molecule. We have these lone pairs up here, and then we have these fluorine atoms down here. Because of that, BRF3 is considered to be a polar molecule. Let's go back to our Lewis structure. So to recap, the bond here between the bromine and the fluorine, that is polar. The electrons here, this pair of electrons, will be shared unequally, spend more time with the fluorine. And because we have the T-shaped molecular geometry that's not symmetrical because of these lone pairs up here, we do have a polar molecule for BRF3. This is Dr. B discussing bromine trifluoride, whether it's a polar or a nonpolar molecule. It is considered polar. Thanks for watching.